Hi there, it's Dennis from DC Tesla Guy. Today I'm going to go over the new update to the Tesla mobile app for iOS. Over the weekend they updated it to 4.5.1 and there's an undocumented feature in there that's charging stats. So it shows you your charging stats for the past 31 days. Let's go ahead and get into it. You can see here from my screen that um, the new version is 4.5.1 and the only feature that they list is the Tesla insurance policy, policy holder piece. If we look at history, there's nothing else that's listed there. And it looks like they only list a couple here and there. So this is not added here. So this came out on the weekend, uh, three days ago, it's Monday. So that would be Friday. I think I downloaded it on Saturday. But anyway, this feature, let's go ahead and take a look at the uh, feature here. So just close this, pull up the mobile app. So now you can see that there is charging stats here. So that's a new item to look at. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. So you can see from here that um, over the past 31 days, I've used 195 kilowatts uh, charging it and it's cost me $24. So one of the things you can do is you can just click into the graph and you can move left to right and it will tell you each day how much you charged and what that cost was. So that's nice. Below it, it lists your charging. So blue being my home charging. So that's my charging at home, uh, the supercharger, and then other, which is zero um, percent but I do have if in red is the supercharging so I did do a couple charges there under gas savings it's telling me it estimated that I've saved sixty four dollars compared to driving a comparable uh, gasoline car at a rate that the gas prices are in Washington state that's where my phone's from and under average cost you can see average cost per kilowatt my average cost is 15 cents per kilowatt. That is that is the charging rate for BC Hydro on phase two here in British Columbia in the lower mainland. And we can take a look at the information card and it basically tells you for each of them what they are. So home charging is based on your utility rate at home. Supercharging is from your account and other um, would be everything else from home or uh, the superchargers. So that could be any level two or level one charger that you're plugging into and you may or may not have to pay for that. And so for myself, every time I plug into those, they're, they are virtually free. I either, either at a hotel, community center or a mall or something like that. So for me, I just set mine to zero. So let's go ahead and see how to set the rate. So under settings, actually on that card, you can see you can customize each of them and that customize takes you to the same place as settings, takes you to this spot here. And you can see that I have set my residential to zone one, which is the lower mainland in British Columbia and it's a residential rate. And that my other is set to zero. So let's go ahead and take a look at the BC Hydro one. So my home settings, it's, it's set to 15 cents. Now it pulls this from BC Hydro and you may want to change this if uh, you're not at the rate that is 15 cents. Mine is about 14.7 cents plus taxes plus fees. It works out to about 15 cents. But let's go ahead and we'll just set a different place just to see how that works. So if you go start over and start over, you're going to pick your location. So I'm going to pick California as an example, and then I'm gonna pick my utility. And I don't know any of these, but let's look at Los Angeles. And then we go next. 
it defaults to the rate code. You can get that from your actual power bill. So you select that and go save. And now it's saved. So if we go back, we actually can now click into it and it looks like in the one that I select is residential time of use rate B Los Angeles. So let's take a, that's a whole lot different than the one I have here in British Columbia. But you can see what are the peak and off peak times. And then you can come down below that and you can see that off peak is 18 cents a kilowatt. Mid peak is 21 cents a kilowatt and peak is 21 cents a kilowatt. Um, let's take a look what it is in the summer. During the summer, it's basically the same, except for it looks like the peak is, oh, it's the same, 27 cents. Oh, 27 cents instead of 21. So if we save that, you'll notice now the, the chart updates to that local uh, utility, which is $31. Again, that's not my rate, but that's that's pretty cool how you can do that now. Let's go back into that. So you can see here that it says for the last 31 days. Now what I'd like to see is, it's a good start for the app, but I'd like to see a drop down menu where you could select last month, this month, uh, last year, this year. So that way you could say, hey, in 2021, I charge my car this many times, or I charge my car and it cost me $250. And then in 2022, with the new rate increases and maybe more driving, it's actually costing me more. It's really nice to know the last 31 days, but it'd be amazing to know if last month, this month, last year, this year. So Tesla, you still got some more work to do with this, but it looks really good so far. Anyway, um, really happy with it so far. So that was the, that is the new update for the Tesla mobile app. Uh, 4.5.1 that was just released on iOS. Android should get this update shortly. Um, shouldn't be any different. It's, it's not tied to the app, the phone. So it looks like we'll just have to wait for Android to release an approved update for the Tesla app. And when that comes out, I'll probably do another video for that one for those on Android, just in case it is actually different. Anyway, thanks so much for watching my video. 